I promise to present the course uh, called Educational Constructive Align Alignment and Design and Implementation of Courses for, for Doctoral Studies. And uh, our team uh, consists of, of University of Helsinki, then we have Yerevan State University from Armenia, and then uh, from Russia, we have the State Vocational Pedagogical University and, and the University uh, and, and MIGAIC. And uh, shortly about this, uh, this course description and my presentation. So this course description is based on the course uh, called Learning in Higher Education, which is uh, five ECTS credits. And it's organized by, by the Center for University Teaching and Learning. In, in the University of, of Helsinki. And uh, the teaching is based on the theory of constructive uh, alignment and student-centered learning. So these are the concepts that we discussed in the previous, um, the previous uh, training that we have had called the Moscow training in April. And then uh, the aim and target group for the course so uh, the course is intended for teachers, meaning all the teaching staff at the university. And this of course in includes uh, doctoral students. And uh, so everybody who participates in the course should have some kind of teaching experience. And the course is part of, uh, of uh, basic studies in university ped pedagogy. It's the first course, course that you, you take when you start learning this uh, university pedagogy. And it, uh, the aim is to, is to tell about the basic theories of learning and uh, then present key pedagogical concepts and to probably answer, hopefully to answer the questions that what kind of processes are involved in learning at university and then uh, how can a teacher support students' active learning. And then for the, for the learning outcomes, I have Use the red color to highlight some uh, some key words uh, words for for the learning outcomes and and also for the content of the course. So uh, the participant will have basic knowledge of learning related phenomena and processes, and understand what kind of learning processes are involved in higher education. Then I have basic knowledge about development and basic knowledge about the relationship between interaction, learning, and behavior. Uh, then uh, the course participant will know how to act in a target-driven and constructive manner in interactive situation and, and understand how the teacher can support students in active learning. And then participants will also be able to reflect, re re reflect on and further develop their own teaching and learning as teachers with the help of knowledge in the psychology of learning. And also they are able to apply educational technology in their own teaching. Uh, okay, this is the course content. So there are quite a lot, quite a lot of technical things involved uh, in the course about, about the basics of pedagogy and, and, and learning. Uh, I think that the main things are uh, is learning in higher education and then there is also a big emphasis on the teacher and the teacher's own activity and development. And then you should practice what you what you preach. So the course uh, structure, uh, the course uses active uh, learning methods that it includes individual and group assignments as well as e-learning. So the course uses Moodle as a platform. Uh, the course has preliminary assignments and face-to-face -face meetings or lectures, if you want to call them that. Uh, then the face-to-face -face meetings also have a small group work. And then there is assignments and learning reports that, uh, that the student needs to, needs to complete. Uh, and these include the student interviews, uh, observing interaction in teaching. So you should go and uh, watch your fellow teacher to give a lecture, for example, and then 
reflect on what is happening in, in that lecture. And then there is also a learning diary and learning report that needs to be needs to be done. And then there is also well, there is something that we added from from actually another another course which we thought that is it's a good uh, add to this course. So uh, once you learn the basic theory of constructive alignment, you should be able to apply it and uh, we want the students to create a constructively, constructively aligned study module or course, or then modify an existing module or course along the principles of constructive alignment. And of course, uh, all of these assignments, uh, the student participants are expected to apply the knowledge obtained from the from the lectures or the face-to-face -face meetings and and literature. Uh, when completing all these as assignments. Uh, then something about the assessment practices and criteria. So, of course, uh, the final grade, and this course is graded from, from, from a scale from, from, of course, there is a possibility to get a fail, but uh, the scale is from one to five. And the overall grade is uh, based on the completion of all the activities involved in the course and then the learning diary and other assignments. And uh, also a little bit more about the assign individual assignments. So in the learning report, the participant uh, should discuss the most important issues they learned in the course on the basis of literature. And then the their own learning assignments and learning journal and uh, you get a better grade if you <laughs> if you have your own insightful ideas and you can you should al always when you uh, for example if you want to say that this course that I have designed this uses is designed based on constructive alignment then you should of course always um, what is the word I'm sorry. Uh, you should you should be able to use pedagogical literature to uh, I'm sorry, Katya, what is Torista in English? <laughs> Perustella. Justify? Justify, yes, thank you. I'm so sorry. The second day seems to be too much for me. I'm, I'm forgetting all the English words. But yes, thank you. So you should always justify all your, all the things based on the based on literature. And uh, I didn't have the uh, dates for the deadlines, but as I saw that everybody else has uh, put June as deadline deadline for this, so we will we will continue the development of this course. And uh, hopefully we also uh, finish our work by June or then by fall. And then the last slide that I have here, I have collect collected some literature, uh, which is used in this in this course. Thank you. And if you have questions or comments or or anything, please feel free to ask. Thank, Thank you, Sini. Uh, we have a couple of questions to you. What is the balance between face-to-face, so-called face-to-face, and e-learning approaches, methods for your course? Mm. Uh, you mean like uh, balance, uh, like in how many hours there are face-to-face? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so five ECTS credits is quite a lot. So it's something like. Uh, 130 hours of work and the face-to-face -face meetings are the are actually quite small part of the uh, of the course if i remember correctly they are something like uh, there's something like 16 hours of face-to-face -face meetings so um, four times four times four hours or, or something like that so the main main uh, main part of the of the course is to to do those assignments either in, uh, in 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 groups or then individually at home. Thank you. And what is a general questions to all persons who are involved in the development of the courses? 
do you involve any PhD students in the, your developments or do you take into account the so-called wish list feedbacks or not at this stage? Um, mm -hmm. Can I answer? Uh, yes. Well, uh, uh, maybe uh, be, in uh, within the break, uh, we discussed with Elena Bazano that uh, involvement students, PhD students, to uh, development of the course will be very useful for our project. Of course, not of all, uh, of course, but probably the part of them. And uh, uh, regarding the course presented by Sini, um, I can say that uh, um, within our standard for PhD education for all uh, subject area, we have obligatory course of pedagogic and psychology of, of uh, high education. And uh, as I know, just it's not official, but opinion of a stu PhD students about the course, uh, they are, um, try to ignore this uh, uh, course because or they consider that it's not necessary for their uh, research career. Uh, and uh, nevertheless, uh, from my opinion, some other professors is uh, uh, important uh, uh, to involve students uh, to teaching activity at uh, home university. And probably um, some uh, new presentation of this course on pedagogic uh, uh, to make this course uh, interesting for a PhD students for uh, their career as a teacher. Uh, uh, the students can combine the uh, uh, their research and teaching at uh, universities often happened uh, it will be very very useful for the project maybe elena bazanova can uh, also uh, give your comments because she one of the author of the course of pedagogic uh, uh, in english uh, at uh, uh, mipt uh, elena are you with us I can provide you a bit of comment because um, at the moment you are looking from traditional Russian education for graduates where everyone is assuming that someone who has PhD will go and end up with academia and all these assumptions are working very well up to now unless you start to work with industrial partners. And in UK education what is happening in this type of courses are set up for young lecturers not for PhD students, but for lecturers who just started their academic careers. So in this case, it basically it targets only the people who choose academic career rather than industrial career. Yes, I, I agree with Tatiana, and we also recommend uh, uh, for those students who are interested, interested in, in continuing their career in academia that these, uh, these courses are really useful for them but of course you can you, you can take them even though you might not end up in in academia okay i don't see any other questions yet in the chat oh should be more. okay there is a comment from yelena bazanova that phd students should be involved in teaching during the course of their studies and I think Sini and Katya, you can comment about yes. active involvement of our PhD students at the University of Helsinki. Yes, so um, so the, we have lots of different kind of PhD students so, uh, because some of them are employed by the university, some of them have individual grants from private foundations and some work in some other research in institutes or, or wherever, but those who are, who are actually employed by the university, they are, uh, they are required to teach 5% uh, of their working time. And if I remember correctly, also those who have individual grants and have, uh, have this sort of an agreement with the university that they are like visiting researchers, they are also required to teach 5%. Katya can correct me if we 
last mm -hmm. one was I, I, But at least mm -hmm. those who are, who are employed, they are required to teach. Yes, yes. I have, I have also learned that this is at least a little bit exceptional, but that is actually a very important teaching resource for, for us, especially in, in, in natural sciences that we can we can use the phd students to to assist courses and some of them are even even lecturing some some courses in 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 some quite rare cases but but sometimes and it, it really improves the teaching as well because we have we have really uh, quite a lot of teaching resource so we can we can provide quite a lot of assistance on to, to support the lecturer on, on different courses yes and, and, and probably uh, from my perspective, I see that uh, teaching while you are doing your uh, your PhD is really really helpful. It is also a transferable skill, the teaching yes. skill. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Katja and Sini. And I think uh, we don't have questions in our chat yet. Please post if you have, and we can continue with the next presentation.